how's it going? Uh, I guess this is going to be uh, part two. Depending on how I do it, I'm just doing the parts all over the place, not really paying too much attention. Uh, this is going to be a uh, part two for how to make uh, Nintendo standard Nintendo NES reproductions. Um, even though I said I wasn't going to show this part, I'm really bored, so I figured you know I might as well go ahead and do it. But this is burning the EEPROMs with your programmer. What I have is uh, it's a bit of a dinosaur. It's, uh, it's a Needham's EMP20. Not sure if you can see that or the glare is getting to it. It's um, it's a hoss. I love this thing. Love it. It's old, but I've never had any issues with it at all. None. The only drawback is, you can see I'm on a laptop here, and this laptop is ancient as well because I have to have a laptop that uses a standard printer port, an LPT parallel port. So, kind of limited. Um, basically, if I lose this computer or any of my other uh, laptops or desktops, then I won't be able to use this guy, unfortunately. So, her time's limited. But, um, the first thing you want to do is split the NES file into the PRG and, C and CHR files. Uh, to do that, I use uh, the, the software for the USB copy nest, which is hardware that you put into your Nintendo to be able to dump um, uh, your Nintendo cartridges to NES files. Since I don't have the copy nest hooked up right now, when I first try to start it, will give an error. That's normal. And you'll want to go to split NES, and that'll come up with a menu. You'll pick your NES file and, you know, split it. And it will give up a couple errors as as you go through it, and when you exit, that is just because the copy nest is not hooked up. It's looking for a little bit of feedback from it, and it's not getting it. But uh, splitting the NES file still works perfectly uh, without any hardware hooked up to it. So after you pick your file that you want to split, you'll split it. It'll go into the folder for your USB copy nest hardware. Uh, it'll put the PRG file in the PRG folder and the CHR in the CHR folder and they will be named um, after the NES file. If your NES file is named uh, like apple.nes, it'll split into apple.prg and apple.chr. So let's go into the software for the programmer, uh, which is random DOS, so there might be a few errors. It's hit or miss because this is XP. It works perfectly in 98 and 95, but I could not find my 98 or 95 uh, installed disk when I when I read to this computer so it does have XP on here and it is a little wonky in XP but unless pretty much unless you're using the MP20 you're not going to have an issue with this so I'll start it up connect to it there we go all right the first thing you're going to want to do once you're in here is select the um, the type of chip and the maker you're going to be using this one is actually both of these are um, uh, M27C1001. It's a, a one meg, and it's made by the uh, the company logo is ST, which you'll see right here is SGS Thompson. So I go to select the device, put the device in. I like calling it a device. Put the chip in, locker in. Manufacturer, you select over here on the left side is SGS Thompson, and then the chip is M27C1001. It'll initialize them. Uh, after that's done, what I always do is I verify that it is erased just to make sure. And she is. So we do it again. There we go. There's the beat. Like I said, this is running DOS software and XP, and it's not 100% um, uh, kosher, I guess, for XP. There are a few errors. I'll probably run into one when I'm burning. Uh, the chip, I'll have to exit out and reburn it. But that's just the nature of the beast. What are you gonna do, right? So um, I'm not sure where to go. The rest of the stuff is pretty much uh, just for the software. So I'll talk to it like you're actually using the MP20. So you press V to bring up uh, the file you want to load. F1 to browse for it. And like I said, I have everything here. So character, any uh, character and program. We're going to go do the program one first, and let's go ahead and do uh, how about Japanese version of Super Mario Bros. 2, Lost Levels. Let's go ahead and do that one, right? So then we'll press eight to load it into the buffer. 
and then we'll program it by pressing one or browsing to it and hitting enter because I'm lazy. So see how she does. This does take a couple of seconds, assuming it doesn't freeze, which I've just jinxed by saying assuming it doesn't freeze. It does take a second to program it. We're about halfway done, halfway there now. Hmm. So just gonna make it all the way through. And verifying and she's good. So there we go. There's the program chip for Super Mario Bros. 2, uh, the Japanese version. Let's go ahead and do character. Uh, same type of chip, same manufacturer. I don't have to change any of those settings. So we'll go ahead and just put her in. Make sure she goes in. A little weird getting the legs into these um, zip sockets sometimes. There we go. She's in, lock her down. And then we we'll want to go through that again. V, F1. And then we're going to do the character file now. So we'll browse down to it. And then load it into the buffer. And then program. Ah. Got ahead of myself there. Verify it is erased first. She's good. Okay, now we'll program. I always have to verify because I don't actually use an EEPROM eraser. I actually have an air uh, sanitizer, those little air um, ionic, whatever the craps they are, and they have a UV light on top of them. So I actually just open it up, put my chips in there, close it down, and use that light to erase them. So it's never 100% whether they're going to be erased or not, so I always have to double check. And there we go. There's a character programmed. So we'll go ahead and exit out of here since we're done with her. And um, I guess real quick, let's go ahead and toss a bad label on them just to cover up that window. I don't like leaving it open for too long, even though I know even if you set this thing outside in the sun where it actually would get the right type of UV, it would still take, some people say weeks, to actually um, uh, effectively erase the chip. So we're just going to write some stuff on here for a loose track. Could have it done ahead of time, so sorry about that. So the first little label, I use the labels not only to keep track of the the, the chip, but also to protect them, like I said. So here we go, program, take out the character. Put it in. There we go. And I'll go ahead and slap them into the test board, which is somewhere. And then we'll hook it up to the Nintendo and uh, I guess see if she actually works. So I'm going to go ahead and move the camera around and I'll be right back. And I'm back. Actually, I lied. There is one more thing you're going to want to do beforehand. Um, you have to know what type of board to put them in. Nestopia. Get it. It's an emulator but it is absolutely amazing for me keeping track of some of this stuff to know what chips go on what board what game goes on what board so bring up Super Mario Bros. 2 this is the one um, that I split and then programmed onto those chips and if you go to I believe it's view yeah we go view and then image info it actually comes up with all this great stuff it'll tell you what board it goes on what mapper it uses the size of the program ROM size of the character ROM good stuff really good stuff so missed that part so anyway now I'll go ahead and uh, put the chips in their test board which I got here I showed another video of my test board so this is my uh, my uh, TS ROM uh, test board so let's plug in the character here to program, put the program in, and there she goes. All right. So we're over at the TV now, and uh, here's that board that we just uh, just programmed. I'm gonna slap it in the Nintendo really quick. I just have a regular Nintendo over here that has an open top, so I'll just slap it in there to test. And there we go. Looks good. Let's do it. Couple, couple of 
little minutes or whatever. Minutes, a couple seconds of play, just to make sure. Seems to be okay. Call that good. So, there we go. I guess the next part of the video is going to be, um, or next part of the, my next video, I guess, is going to be actually wiring those chips onto a proper board and putting them in a cartridge. So, uh, I guess I'll see you guys when I get, uh, get around to doing that. Y'all take it easy.